Hey, once again, did not want to work for me. I don't know why, but whatever. So this is the new stream. Uh, <clears throat> hang on one second while I tweet out the link for this. Let me hit the share button. Copy. Go on here. Okay, new link, paste, go. Okay, and let me do that on Facebook real quick also. Oh boy, okay, so yeah, I did a test earlier today and it worked perfectly fine with me doing like a delayed start, you know, like setting it up in advance and then starting it up later. Uh, it's not working now. Don't ask me why. YouTube just does not like me. So let's see here. Change these. And we shall start this video. Okay, so that's done. All right, so new Dreamcasting episode. It has been probably a year and a half since I did my last Dreamcasting episode. And why? Well, that's because um, I go through phases when I collect. And when I say phases, I mean that there will be like a good month where I focus specifically on, like, say, the Dreamcast. And then I'll kind of burn out a little bit on that and then i'll focus on let's say the game boy advance or you know the, the nes or the super nintendo or the genesis i just i go through like these weird phases and one of my friends who is on facebook he owns his own group it's uh batter rads retro nerdatorium he hooks me up with uh games now and then and he says he never knows what to tell me when it comes to uh, the games that he comes into possession of that he wants to sell off because he, you know, at least to tell me what games he has available because he can never tell which game system I'm interested in collecting for at any given time because he notices that my interests shift back and forth all the time. So, excuse me, need to shift a bit. Um, let me also tweet this out real quick. Change of plan. New video is at and let me post the picture real quick. Da -da -da -da. So uh, I tend to not focus on collecting specific consoles for very long. It's and I don't know if it's an OCD thing or what, or if I just have uh, no attention span when it comes to certain consoles, but I can never seem to focus on one specific console for very long. I, I get bored because then I guess I would stop collecting if I did it like that. So whatever. Let me see this. Delete this. There we go. All right. So new live stream. So over the past year and a half, I've kind of gone back and forth on if I'm collecting for the Dreamcast or not. And I want to say over the summer, I started to get back into it again, found a whole bunch of stuff I've been looking for. I was finding it at stores that I usually don't find Dreamcast stuff at at all. And finding new games that, you know, when I don't really think about looking for Dreamcast games, finding stuff that is usually pretty expensive really cheaply is what you know like stimulates me into getting back into collecting for that particular console and that happened with one game in this stack over here uh so uh i've it got me so into it that now i have two giant stacks of games here that i want to talk about it's time for a new dreamcasting episode otherwise the next one i do which will probably be the last one i ever do because uh let's see i have my notes right here uh in the last dreamcasting video which was part three which I did probably a year and a half ago. 
there are 253 North American games for the Dreamcast. Uh, and that doesn't count any of the new games being released currently. Uh, I had 190 games collected in that last video. And that was 37 new games that I had added. No, sorry. I'm reading my notes all wrong. Okay, so in that video, at that point in time, I had collected 190 new games. I had collected 190 games in the in the collection. Uh, so I have collected 37 new games total in for this new video. So let's get into it. Um, all right, so let's start with the games that aren't very interesting, like the sports games, the racing games, the stuff that, you know, the... Like when it comes to the Dreamcast, there's a ton of racing and sports games that I need to collect. I, I basically have a lot of the really pricey games out of the way already. Now it's just finding commons and, you know, like the games that are just all over the place. But now that I'm looking for them, I can't seem to find them anywhere. So uh, my Patreon, Chris S., who you'll notice at the end of every video that I do, it says thanks to my Patreon, Chris S., uh, contacted me on Facebook one day and said, hey, this video store or video game store that I go to, got in a big shipment of like, or got someone had sold him a bunch of Dreamcast games. Do you need any of these? And he sent me a picture and there were a lot of commons in that stack that I said, yes, I do need. And he picked them up for me and sent them to me. And uh, I have those five games right here. I'm going to start with these first two. Got NFL 2K1 and, and, and uh, World Series Baseball 2K1. Uh, I already did own these two games in my collection, but they were those greatest hits versions or whatever Dreamcast used to call the player's choice or whatever they were with the orange uh, spines. And I hate those. I found them at a, I think it was a Goodwill or a Salvation Army for like a dollar each. I didn't want to have those in my collection anymore. So when I saw that these were in that picture that uh, Chris sent me, I said, yes, give me those. I need those very badly to replace the ones that I do have. So I was thankful for these, even though I'll probably never play them. <laughs> Sad as it is, it's probably true. Uh, he also picked up for me uh, ESPN NBA Tonight, or Tonight, however you want to say it. That's a very 90s, early 2000s thing to do, is to use the uh, numbers, like the Elite Speak stuff. Uh, another game I'll probably never play, but I needed to have the complete set. I uh, also picked up this one I probably will play. I will probably play this one a lot. And that is... NHL 2K2. I am a huge fan of hockey games. I love hockey in video game form. I don't watch it all that often, but for some reason, hockey is the one video game that, or the one video game style that I can actually stand to play. So there's that. And is the chat not working? There we go. Saru's in the chat. Yay! Saru Maru, yay! <clears throat> Thanks for the sub, Saru. I saw you subbed earlier today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Uh, and the last game that Chris picked up for me at that store was uh, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. This is like, I guess, Tony Hawk. It looks like it's. It looks exactly like Tony Hawk, just on a on a bicycle. Uh, I like the Tony Hawk games. I'll probably play this one a little bit to see what it's like, but it's probably not going to be one that I play a whole lot. All right, so when it comes to the rest of these games that you know are the common whatever ones that I needed to get out of the way in order to complete my collection, uh, we've got uh, Virtual Athlete 2000. Uh, yeah, it's sealed. Don't really care. Uh, I'll probably never play this one in my life. It is like track and field on the Dreamcast. Um, from the team who brought you Virtual Tennis. I love Virtual Tennis. I don't think this is going to be nearly as arcadey as Virtual Tennis is, so probably not going to be playing this one a whole lot. Uh, another ESPN game. It's ESPN International Track and Field, which makes me think it is just a carbon copy of the Virtual Athlete. It, I don't think it's made by the same company, but whatever. I got this one sealed also. I will probably never play this one as well. Uh, here's a series of games that... I remember playing in the arcade, and they were pretty fun. You actually require a specific controller to play these, which I did pick up as well. If I can find out where I put it. There you are. <laughs> okay, so you need this to play these games. This is the Dreamcast Fishing Controller. 
Uh, there was a dream or a game works by where I used to live. They had one of these games in this stack in arcade form there. And it had this, uh, basically like a, a more die hard, you know, a uh, uh, hardcore version of this controller built into it in order to play these games. Uh, and I enjoyed playing them in the arcade, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy playing them at home as well. Uh, so you can pretty sure you can guess what these are, but I bought every single game that you need that controller uh, to play. Uh, Real Fishing Wild. Uh, this one looks more of a sim than like an arcade fishing game, like the ones that Sega made, like Sega Bass Fishing which I got sealed. This will probably not stay sealed very long. I really need to play this one. Uh, game works. It's in Schaumburg, Illinois. And my camera is going crazy because I moved around. Uh, Sega Bass Fishing 2. Uh, more of the same, but I've never played this one before. I never. I don't know if this one had an arcade version or not, but uh, maybe it's a Dreamcast exclusive. I have no idea. But I will definitely play that. And the last one is Sega Marine Fishing, which seems like a more hardcore version of those games. Uh, and this one is sealed as well. I found all these on eBay, super cheap. Surprising since I usually see the Marine Fishing one going for at least 30 bucks or something like that. I think I got this for like 10, whatever. Uh, so there are those. So I picked all of those up at the same time I picked up the controller. Also picked up Rippin' Riders, which is a snowboarding game. Uh, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as cool as SSX is. I love SSX and SS... What is it? SSX3. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Uh, Extreme Sports. Extreme. Like, did this come out after that movie Triple X came out? I don't know. But let's see here. It says that... Test your skills in six hot extreme sports, including bungee jumping and sky surfing. Battle to Victory in Intense Triple Event Racing. Yay. Explore five exotic real-world locations, including Mount Kilimanjaro, Maui, and the Himalayas. Twelve demanding multi-environment tracks to choose from, and relive the action with instant replay. Hooray. Okay. I remember there were so many fishing games. I know, and I think that's it. There's just four fishing games for the system, and that's all there is. So... If you had bought that controller early on, uh, I think you might have been disappointed by the games that you had to play with it. So nowadays, it I mean, it's cool as a novelty. How about that? Uh, here's one that I'll probably never play. It's called Snowcross Championship Racing, Snowmobile Racing. I'm sorry. I really like Arctic Thunder, so I don't think this is going to even compare at all, even though if it features Yamaha snowmobiles. Whee! Uh, another sealed game I picked up really cheap, and that is P.O.D. Speed Zone. Does this have anything to do with that band P.O.D. that was real popular in the early 2000s? I doubt it. 50 free hours of SegaNet. Does mean a lot of good now, people. Uh, but it's like a futuristic racing game where your cars actually have wheels. It's not like Wipeout. Disappointing. <clears throat> Uh, Super Runabout San Francisco Edition. I'm assuming this is trying to be like uh, San Francisco Rush. I uh, don't expect it to be very good. It's by Interplay. They were not very good at that point in time, as far as I remember. Uh, but whatever. Yay. Needed it. <laughs> TNN Motorsport Hardcore Heat. Yay. Uh, pickup truck racing and stuff like that. And mud flinging. Things. I don't know what kind of racing this is. Renegade drivers, distinct terrain and weather conditions. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Whatever. Uh, this one I might try out because it looks kind of cool. It's called Mag Force Racing. It's another futuristic racing game. Uh, looks like a combination of F Zero for the GameCube and Wipeout. I guess. Eh, can't be that bad. Um, let's see here. What else? Okay, and eh, I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be, uh, but I get it. It's a, I get it. It's a parody of a game show. I don't know what the meaning behind this was or why they would want to make a game called this, but it is called Who Wants to Beat Up a Millionaire? What is the point of this? Just make it Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Is that what the show was called? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? 
just make a game based on that. But I guess they couldn't get the license, so this is the next best thing. I don't know the story behind it, uh, but it looks dumb as hell. So, yeah, um, a hilarious parody of the hit TV quiz show. Duh. Yeah, that game was dumb. It looks dumb, but want a complete collection, got to have it. Uh, also picked up – this one was kind of hard to find. I'm surprised. I found the first game in this series on the Dreamcast at a Salvation Army for like $2, but this one was kind of hard to track down. I had to get this off of Amazon, and I actually couldn't get an answer from the seller as to if it was complete or not. Finally, he, he said, oh, you mean like in the jewel case? Yeah, that's what complete means, dumbass. Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Rogue Spear. Uh, this is a sequel to Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. <laughs> Duh. Uh, yeah, it's like multiplayer. Is it multiplayer? Yeah, this is like a four-player deathmatch stuff, but there it's like a strategy first-person shooter type thing. Yay. Uh, also picked this one up. Uh, I do actually like wrestling games from this era. It's WWF. Shh, don't tell anyone. It's still at the old day. Royal Rumble. Uh, yeah, The Rock's on the cover. And uh, Savage Steve Austin, the bionic redneck. Not into watching wrestling, but wrestling games are usually pretty fun. Um, I remember watching a bunch of friends play some of the wrestling games on the Nintendo 64 and saying, like, that actually looks kind of entertaining because I remember – the wrestling games that I grew up playing were like pro wrestling on the NES, and that was kind of shit. So, you know, wrestling games had evolved. I haven't played any of the new ones. I don't plan to. I hear that they're all garbage. But the ones that came out like in the mid-90s to mid-2000s, I hear are pretty good. So definitely be playing this one. All righty then. Let's see what we got here. Uh, I don't know about this. I don't know how this is going to work on a Dreamcast, but... The gold edition of Railroad Rail, 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 can't talk, Railroad Tycoon 2. Uh, now in 3D. Um, it looks super freaking complicated. It looks like SimCity on steroids. Uh, like SimCity 2000 almost. It's I don't know how this is going to work with a Dreamcast controller. Unless I can use the keyboard. Can I use the keyboard? No, I cannot use the keyboard. It is standard controller right in the back. Lesai. It's a simulator. Duh. You're building a railroad. <laughs> I had this game back in the day, and I actually had the super hard-to-find controllers that you needed to play this game also. Sold them because I can't remember what I was doing back then. It was probably 2001-ish. I can't remember what it was, but I needed money, and I was like, well, those controllers go for a lot of money on eBay. I'll just sell those. And I did, and I regret it. They actually had these at the um, people play ga people play games garage sale that I talked about in my um, my pickup video last week, my live pickup video, and some woman snatched it out from under me as I was walking up to. It. I was like, "Oh!" and she was like, Haha, "Sorry, bitch," and just walked away with it. And uh, I was kind of ticked, but you know, eventually I'll find them somewhere. I hope pretty cheap. Like, uh, what was his name? Uh, Pat Contry, the Pat the NES Punk, found two of these for like five bucks each at a a uh, swap meet. Uh, Samba de Amigo. I'm a huge fan of rhythm games. I loved playing this back in the day. Uh, for a while, I just played it with just a controller. Yeah, I, I almost felt like tackling her ass, but I was going to be a gentleman and be like, no, nope, you found it for you. You got it before me. I'm not going to I'm not gonna be a dick. Um, I played this with the controller a lot back when it was first released. It was super fun, but playing it with the Maraca controllers was awesome. It was really responsive, I remember. like, I remember certain controllers... Uh, like what was it, the activator for the Genesis and all that did not work basically at all. And this looked like a variation of the act, the activator where you had like this bar, the sensor bar that you would put on the floor in front of you and you had to hold the maracas above that sensor bar. And then according to the, the Wii one suck. Yeah, the Wii one's pretty bad. I have it, but it's not that great. Um, depending on where you're supposed to move the maracas, you had to move them like low, mid and high with each hand and it read the maracas extremely well i was surprised how well it worked so uh i need to get a copy or i need to get a set of those maraca controllers once again i will definitely definitely stream myself playing it if i do so i can make a goddamn fool of myself <laughs> oh man the things i do to entertain people uh looney tunes space race it's another mario kart clone i have a couple of them already for the dreamcast i have 
the Disney one, which is absolute trash. And I also have Wacky Races. I th- my, there might be another one in there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, this is the newest one I picked up, and I'm not looking forward to it. A lot of these Mario Kart clones aren't that great, uh, especially from this era. So I think the first one that I played that I actually enjoyed was after Mario, other than Mario Kart, was which one was that? Uh, Crash Team Racing. And surprisingly, that Super Bombad Racing, the Star Wars one, wasn't too bad either. Uh, another one that was getting kind of hard to find, but I did find it at, I think I did find this at People Play Games when they were shutting down last year. Uh, Donald Duck Going Quackers. I think there's a PlayStation 1 version of this game out there, uh, but it is a 3D platformer. It looks a lot like Crash Bandicoot. Uh, I don't know. I haven't played it yet, but a lot of I remember the Disney games around this time were pretty decent. So uh, one that I'm not sad about buying. I think I got this for 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, another sealed one. It's another puzzle game. I don't know how this is going to work. Uh, it looks really complicated and goofy, but whatever. Wet Tricks Plus. You basically have to contour. You're given like a a, a level, like a like a like a pan, a piece of a piece of land, and it has contours and it has mountains and peaks and valleys and all that. And you have to kind of move the valleys up and down in order to contain a specific amount of water. Uh, I remember watching somebody play this on YouTube, and I was like, uh, my brain's melting out my ears. Uh, so I don't know how this one is going to play, if it's good or not, but according to this, it has stunning 3D graphics. What's up, Wallbreaker? Welcome to the stream. We'll try that one out. This one, it it is super common, but it, I had a hard time finding this one as well, and that's Frogger 2 Swampy's Revenge. It's a freaking Frogger game, people. Why is this one being, why is this one so hard to find? Uh, but this one's more like a um, uh, adventure platformer in 3D. I remember it reminded me a little bit of Castellian for the NES some at some certain parts. Uh, but yeah, this one isn't just crossing the street with a frog and trying to avoid cars and all that. No, this one is a platformer with like puzzle elements to it also. And another puzzle game is the next Tetris Online Edition. I think this is the only edition that they got on the Dreamcast. I don't think there's a standard one, just the online one. But this one's more focused on multiplayer. Not a problem. If only the multiplayer internet stuff on uh, the Dreamcast would work. Nowadays, it would be cool to try playing that online. Uh, But, yeah, I remember the music in this game being absolutely fantastic. If you thought the music in, like, Pictionary sounded way too awesome for that game, it's the same for this. Like, this is a Tetris game. Why is the music so damn good? So if you... Like strange techno music, this is the game for you. So that is that first stack. Those are all like the common ones that uh, didn't really, well, some of them took some doing to find. Next stack is the really, some of the expensive ones and the ones that took some doing to get. So how about we'll start with this one. Uh, (coughs) Excuse me. This one is a, uh, a game that had a recent remake come out and is now the talk of the town. That's all everyone is streaming nowadays. Resident, <laughs> excuse me. For some reason, my throat has been going crazy the last week or so, so it's always dry. <sighs> uh, Resident Evil 2 on the Dreamcast. I picked this up not only because I needed it for the Dreamcast collection, but I was on the Cartridge Club's uh, podcast. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but the game of the month that we had to play for the podcast was Resident Evil 2. And it didn't matter which console we played it on. I have it for the PlayStation 1, but I was like, well, this would be this is my excuse to buy the, the Dreamcast version because it's going to be obviously a lot better. I could play my Dreamcast through the VGA cable. comes out looking super nice on my HDTV and not have to deal with a lot of the garbage that you know comes with playing a game that is not an HD on an HD television. So played through the... Uh, the Leon campaign, and then I was halfway through the Claire campaign when I did the podcast, so I had a nice uh, amount of things I could talk about uh, on the podcast, but this is a great port of that game. It is so much better. It's smooth, clean. The music comes through sounding a lot better. I don't know. Everything about it was just a lot nicer. Um, I makes me kind of want to try the GameCube version to see how that compares to this. So maybe I'll pick that one up also. This is my favorite Resident Evil game of all time, so we shall see. And I have yet to play the remake. So there's that. 
Uh, also picked up a sealed copy of Prince of Persia, Arabian Nights. This is a 3D Prince of Persia game that actually kind of follows suit of what the original Prince of Persia games were like, just done from behind the character. And then it goes into like side view when you're going to do like a sword to sword fight. And haven't tried it yet. I watched some gameplay of it on YouTube to see if it was decent. Because uh, if it was not a good looking game, I might have uh, tried to get a, a crappy copy so I wouldn't feel bad if I paid five bucks for a game that's all scratched up. Uh, but got one sealed for, I think, 20 bucks. Good find. <sighs> Let's see here. Confidential Mission. This one is like playing Time Crisis or House of the Dead. It's a on-rails shooter. Uh, I don't have... Well, I have the light gun for the Dreamcast. It's that real, that snub-nosed one. And don't have a CRT to play it on, so it's kind of useless to me right now. But according to this... I can just use the standard controller. So I'm set. Uh, but this one looks pretty fun. It looks just like House of the Dead. I know this game got a sequel on the uh, PlayStation 2? Or was it 1? Reggie, Radical Reggie was talking about one of the games in this series. I think there was games on the PlayStation 1 in this series. Uh, Psychic Force 2012. Um, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game uh, where everyone has special powers. It reminds me from the footage that I saw... It reminded me of like Dragon Ball Z almost. Um, they got this one sealed also, even though the case is all cracked up. Uh, but yeah, whatever. 3D fighting game, Dragon Ball Z-esque, I guess. And uh, you love this series? I, I've never played any of them in the series. This is the first one I've owned. But I know Ra Reggie had like an import for the PlayStation 1, and he was trying to sell me on it for a while. I'm like, eh, I don't feel like paying 100 bucks for a game. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Driller. This one is another puzzle game, but it's like a, a Dig Dug esque, I guess. Uh, I haven't played it yet. Uh, I can't really play games now on my Dreamcast because I got that 4K television. Doesn't have a VGA port on it, nor does it have the what is it? The yellow, red, and white uh, was it component composite? I can never remember which one is which. Ports on it. Uh, so I have to wait until my retro tink shows up so I can start playing Dreamcast games again so I can find out if this one's any good. But it sounds pretty good. I know there's a sequel for this on the Game Boy Advance, maybe, but it looks cool. Uh, this is one of the games I was looking for at the Midwest Gaming Classic last year. I talked about it in my games I'm looking for at the Midwest Gaming Classic 2018 video. Uh, there was a copy of it on the floor. Uh, Musty Hobbit and one of the guys from the Cartridge Club found it, texted me on Facebook about it and said, get your ass over here right now. You know, I found it. It's a decent price. Get over before someone else finds it. And I guess they walked away from the table while they were waiting for me. And then by the time I got there, it was gone. So didn't get a chance to get my copy of it until later. My friend, I think it was Brett from, uh, or Felix the Brett from Batterad's uh, Retro Nerdatorium on Facebook. He texted me, he's like, look what I found. It's EG Gear, Elemental Gimmick Gear. It's one of the few RPGs that's available on the uh, Dreamcast. At least I think it's an RPG. 3D polygon fight with these theories. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, it looked fantastic. Yeah, come on. Sorry, I saw you there last year, man. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, can't wait to try this one out. It looks really fun. I heard a lot of good things about it, and it's kind of hard to find now. This one, I don't know what to make of it, but it looks like a sci-fi version of uh, Rogue Spear or like those Tom Clancy games, but it's Inter Industrial Spy Operation Espionage. What? Um, it's made by NEC, you know, the Turbo Graphics people, so can't be that bad, can it? I love NEC's Turbo Graphics stuff, so. Um, it looks like kind of a strategy, first-person shooter type Metal Gear clony thing, I guess. Yeah, worst name ever. It definitely is stupid. Industrial Spy Operation Espionage. It's like Operation Windback. What? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It looks like it's a combination. I'll read the back of it for you guys just so you can see. Or The year is 2000. The future. Giant corporations have taken the place of governments, creating a worldwide economy. Power depends on the theft of industrial secrets. In the brutal world of industrial espionage, Blitzstrahl 
rises above its competition by assembling espionage agents with specialized abilities and training. The espion agents. Clever. Uh, welcome to the world of Blitzstraw, the crack industrial espionage team with seven primary agents that you will utilize to crack some of the toughest industrial espionage challenges the world has ever seen. You still told me nothing about this game. <laughs> they love those super long titles. I guess they do. Uh, but yeah, it looks interesting. I'll give it that. I'll try it out. Uh, next, I found out this set people play games when they were shutting down back in, I want to say March of last year. Uh, I found this on their shelf and I snapped it up because this is one of the one of the games that I know is usually pretty pricey. And uh, I found it there for, I think, 20 bucks. also. It's uh, Stupid Invaders. Mm. Or the, sub uh, the subtitle is The Epic Adventure of Five Incredibly Stupid Aliens. Okay. It looks like a 3D platformer, kind of like uh, Mario 64. Uh, there's five different aliens. You got Bud, Etno, Candy, Stereo, because he has two heads. Wow, that's clever, too. And Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Whatever. Save them from themselves. Yeah. Doesn't look too exciting. Whatever. It's by Ubisoft. And Ubisoft kind of sucked back then. I'll save those for last. This is the game that I found. <coughs> excuse me. At uh, Half Price Books of all places. And it was the game that got me back into collecting for the Dreamcast again. Because I did not expect to find this at a Half Price Books of all places. And to find it as cheap as I did, I think I found this for like $30, and it normally goes for like $60 or $70. And that's Bomberman Online. It was just sitting there on the shelf. What's up, Colin? I remember this cartoon. It was called Room for Rent in Australia or Spaced Invaders. <laughs> um, online Bomberman. Okay. Uh, I've never played... At this point in time, when this came out, I never played a Bomberman game. I didn't play a Bomberman game until... I want to say the late 2000s. So at this point, I wasn't really interested in the franchise. <coughs> so I wouldn't have bought this back when it first came out. Uh, so I wouldn't have been able to take, or take uh, advantage of the online capabilities of the Dreamcast back then. I was mostly using my Dreamcast to surf the internet in my bedroom back then. I never used to play games except for a little bit of Fantasy Star Online. But yeah, uh, online Bomberman, you can see it looks... It looks like you would expect a Bomberman game to look like in 3D. But that was the game. I did not expect to find that in the wild. And I was like, from that point on, I was like, you know what? I really need to get to work on completing that Dreamcast collection. So that was the spark that got me all this stuff. These next two games I got at People Play Games. All right. So if you watched that, that four-part pickup video that I did over the summer, uh, I talked about how when People Play Games was shutting down, I went there on a Friday night, and they said that they were doing a raffle on Friday and Saturday night, uh, different raffles each day. And depending on how much money you spent, I think it was for every 10 bucks you spent, you got a ticket. I spent a lot of money there because they, they the guy that uh, was uh, running the register knew me, gave me a huge discount on games. So I was buying more than I normally would. I ended up spending a ton of money. I had a stack of tickets like I could wad them in my hand like this. So... I came back that Friday night, uh, and only one other guy came for the raffle. So we split the money that we'd have gotten. It would have been a $50 gift certificate. We split the money just to be nice. Uh, so he got 25 I got 25 I used it to buy that signed copy of Mortal Kombat for the Sega CD that was signed by Daniel Piscina, who played Johnny Cage. Um, and then I went back the next day on Saturday, spent even more money, and got even more tickets. And I won the Saturday night raffle hands down. And I used that money that I got to buy Fatal Fury Mark of the Wolves on the Dreamcast. It was sitting in there. These games are too expensive to have, on the, have out on the floor because we're afraid you're going to steal them case, you know. And uh, I got this. I think I paid out of pocket $15. Uh, so this is a port of a game for the Neo Geo. I can't remember if it was a cartridge or a CD game only. It might have been both. Uh, but... Another game in the Final Fights or Fatal Fury series. Did I say Final Fight? Am I? What's wrong with me? Fatal Fury. I'm tired. <laughs> Another good game in the Fatal Fury series. I love Fatal Fury. I love the mechanics of moving back and forth in the backgrounds and all that, and the characters. I love the Bogards. They're super fun to play. So when I got when I found this in that case, I was like, "What am I going to spend this fifty dollars on? There's really nothing left in the store I want except for that." <laughs> uh, yeah, I picked it up. 
and the guy that uh, gave me my personal discount, he gave me a discount on this as well. And yeah, it made my day. <clears throat> and I found this that Friday at People Play Games. This was on this one was on the shelf. It's King of Fighters Evolution. I have the other King of Fighters game on the Dreamcast. Which one is it? It is uh, King of Fighters Dream Match ninety nine. I think it is. Uh, King of Fighters. I love King of Fighters. All the characters from SNK games in one game, or at least most of them. I love SNK fighting games, period. I have a ton of the SNK compilations for like the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox and all that with all the different uh, King of Fighters games I have for the Xbox, the King of Fighters. It has two King of Fighters games on one disc, which is pretty awesome. And uh, super thrilled to find this one. Now I have all those King of Fighter games for the Dreamcast. <clears throat> and that's it for official video games for the Dreamcast. Okay, now we're going to get into the world of the new stuff that's been coming out for the Dreamcast. SNK Fighters, I picked that up. I picked up the, the, the SNK Heroines for the Switch, and it's a lot of fun. And I also picked up that SNK compilation uh, game, the, the 40th anniversary one that came out for the Switch also. What's up, Intrigued Gaming? Good to see you. So there are still new games coming out for the Dreamcast nowadays, and I don't know if these are considered part of the official North American console set. I don't know if it is. I'm not Personally, I'm not counting it, but I want them anyway because I love the Dreamcast. It's my second favorite console of all time. I want to be able to play games on it. I want to, I want to support companies that are making new games for the console nowadays. So I found a whole crap load of these on eBay and uh, took advantage. A couple of them I got from Play Asia, like uh, Alice's Mom's Rescue. Okay, this is uh, one of the games that was released by Josh Prod. Uh, I got this actually, no, I got this on eBay through a store that Adam, Adam Korolik, who's another Chicago gaming YouTuber, um, he knows these guys and they send him copies of their new games all the time. <clears throat> yeah, that name is dumb. Alice's Mom's Rescue. It's got, yeah, two, or, yeah, whatever. Um, it's a side-scrolling platformer. It looks like it's trying to be Mario Brothers. But it's, it's the thing is, like, when it comes to, like, Dreamcast, okay, you see what, like, a, a, a first-gen or, like, one of the release uh, the release games that came out where the Dreamcast was first released on, was it nine nine ninety nine? Like, Soul Calibur. Look how great that game looked. This is a after-the-fact game that came out, like, three years ago, and it looks... Like, like a mobile game. Not too sure about this one. I don't know, man. I got my FX unit Yuki right here. I need the Dreamcast version, though. Yeah! Need it! <clears throat> uh, another one is called Inhabitants. This is a puzzle game. <coughs> Excuse me, a puzzle game where you're getting rid of blocks. It looks generic as all hell. Oh, these are homebrews. What do you expect? I don't think people are going to have like the, the capabilities to make a full-on AAA game at home. My throat's going freaking dry again. Sorry about that. Uh, so I don't expect much from games like this, but like Alice's Mom's Rescue and this look really kind of dopey. Another one of those is Cool Hoarders. Another really stupid name for a game. A uh, company is called Harmless Lion Games. And this looks beyond generic. It looks like it's trying to be like Bomberman, I guess. It says, Iskar has stolen all the sheep, and Zeus must prove that he is the coolest sheep herder around by traveling on an adventure to get them all back. Can you get Zeus through all the different challenges that will face him on the quest to restore peace to the pasture? Prove that you're the best cool herder by challenging your friends and, comp and or the computer in four-player head-to-head sheep herding action. That sounds super exciting, guys. I've always wanted a sheep herding game in my collection. I got one now. Yeah. Look at that. It looks like Bomberman. And here's like at the end of uh, a, when you would beat a zone of uh, Super Smash TV where it would tally up how many VCRs and, you know, whatever it is that you've collected. It's like, here's your collection of sheep. Yay. <laughs> Uh, this one I was super excited to get because I have the PlayStation 4 version of this. To have it on the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 4 is great. Ghost, what is it? Ghostblade. <laughs> I can't, almost 
slipped it on the tongue. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ghostblade. It's a vertical scrolling shmup. It is super fun, super frantic, crazy as hell. Awesome freaking music. The graphics are fantastic, at least on the PlayStation 4 they are. I'm pretty sure that they would look pretty good on this too because from what I can tell on the back, yes, this looks amazing. <coughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. Look at that. Uh, love it. I love the PlayStation 4 version, so definitely, definitely going to enjoy playing this one also. There's another really crappy puzzle game. It's called Irides or Irat. Irids. I don't know how to pronounce it. Master of Blocks. Yeah. The picture on the back makes it look a lot like Luminous. It doesn't look very exciting at all. But like I said, these are homebrew games. Yeah, people are making these on their home computers. So I don't expect them to be able to pump out a AAA style game. Kind of like the way, you know, Ghostblade definitely looks like one. So I don't expect it to be awesome, but whatever. It says, enter the colorful world of Iridus, where the iridescence of thousands of blocks will stun you with their beauty and challenge you to become the master of blocks. It's an intense puzzle game which requires strategy and quick reflexes to progress. Oh, wow. I spent my money wisely. Mm -hmm. What's up, Cabot? I'm not dying, man. It's like, I, don't, I think I might have another respiratory tract infection. It's probably from the cold from last week and the week before. Just I just my throat is always going dry on me. Uh, another great shoot 'em up. This one is a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up. Super awesome. I talked about this in a video that I made not too long ago, but it's called Sturmwind. I got this off of Play Asia. Super awesome. The graphics are some of the best graphics I've seen on the Dreamcast ever. It looks fantastic. I love how this looks. The music is fantastic. The gameplay is great. I mean, it's just it's like a, a souped up hyperactive gradius it is this game is absolutely fantastic this is one of the best in the group of new games that are coming out for the dreamcast that i've played and this one is actually kind of old when compared to some of the other ones as far as i remember and this is the one that was getting like all the different real no that's that redux sorry getting my games confused this was fantastic if you have a dreamcast pick this one up if you love shooters this is fantastic i love it got this one from uh play asia as well it's a fighter. I do believe it's a port of a, uh, a Neo Geo game. It's called Breakers. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It looks a lot like Final Fight. Uh, not Final Fight. I keep saying Final Fight. God damn. Fatal Fury. Ooh, they got the F game mixed up. Ooh, Street Fighter. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, World Heroes. Uh, it looks fantastic. I haven't opened it yet, like I said. Can't play Red Dreamcast right now. Uh, it is. I can't use my VGA cable on that TV that I have right now. But it looks fantastic. Radical Reggie was talking about this. It sounds fantastic. And then here's another. These are definitely not part of a North American collection, like, at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, these are um, reproductions. Uh, there was a guy that I knew on Instagram, went by Toysaurus Games. I talked about him in, I think, my last dreamcasting video i bought a couple of repros from him one of them was uh 50 neo geo games on one disc and uh, one was double dragon the double dragon game that came out for the neo geo that was based on the double dragon movie that came out in the mid 90s that that was a port of that to the dreamcast good game terrible movie i bought a couple of other repros from him one of them is another snk game and it is cyberlip this one looks like a crazy psychotic version of um, Metal Slug with a little bit of Contra 3 mixed in, I guess. <clears throat> it is insane. It is crazy. I played this before. I couldn't play my Dreamcast anymore. I absolutely loved it. It doesn't have an instruction manual. Like I said, it's a reproduction. But it, look at that. It's just crazy. Uh, I love the fact that I could get Neo Geo CD games on my Dreamcast. That way I don't have to buy a Neo Geo. I can play them on my Dreamcast instead of spending hundreds and thousands of dollars on Neo Geo stuff and not hate myself in the morning. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's not, It's like I said, it's a reproduction that this guy is able to convert the SNK, the Neo Geo CD games over to the Dreamcast. He doesn't do these anymore. Um, I was looking for... He did a whole bunch of those hacks of Streets of Rage 2 where he was putting other characters in the Streets of Rage 2 game. He, there was one that had Resident Evil characters. There was one that had The Simpsons in it. 
uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He had like CD versions of those. And uh, I was trying to get a couple of them because they sounded really fun. And he was like, no, I don't do the repro CD stuff anymore. It's just repro cartridge stuff now. So it was on, uh, he sells his stuff through Instagram. So look up Toysaurus Games. <coughs> and the other one that I picked up from him before he stopped doing it is going to be the one that blows everyone's mind. They're like, how does this exist on a Sega console ever? Ready? The Legend of Zelda Return of the Hylian. It's a hack of Link to the Past. It is a brand new Zelda game that's a hack. Uh, on the Dreamcast. What? Holy crap. When I saw that he was selling this, I snapped it up as fast as I possibly could. I mean, look at that. It is Link to the Past style graphics, but is a brand new Zelda game. It's a hack. And the fact that it is able to be played on the Dreamcast in HD through that VGA cable of mine. What? How? Yes. It, is, it exists. It's a thing. The guy doesn't make these anymore, so don't be going, where can I get it? Where can I get it? Ah, uh, he won't do it. You might be able to find one somewhere else, but not through Toy Saurus. He doesn't do them anymore. This set me back a whole whopping $25. <sighs> he reproductions. Uh, I played it a little bit to see if it even worked on my Dreamcast. And yes, it works perfectly fine. It reuses the graphics. It reuses the music and all that from Link to the Past. Fantastic game. It is really, really cool. It's all new levels, all new dungeons and everything. It's fantastic. So, wow! I when like I said when I found when I saw that he was making these and selling them, I jumped on it as fast as I could, and I was super thrilled that I did because from what I can tell, about three months after I bought this, he stopped making the repros. So I'll read the back for you guys real quick. It says after Link's victory over Ganon in a Link to the Past, no one knows what Link's wish to the Triforce was, but this wish reunite or reunified the Light World and the Dark World and brought the Seven Wise Men's descendants back to life. Peace was back in Hyrule, but unfortunately, this wish was also this wish also resurrected Ganon and his henchmen. He was preparing his revenge, but he couldn't do anything without the Triforce. One night, a familiar voice speaks to Link in his sleep. Na, 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 na. Hey, listen! Anyway, um, yeah, the, the font is really hard to read on this back. <laughs> so, whatever. I should stream this. I should, totally. When I get my retro tink, I will definitely try. I need to get a new laptop, though, too. So... Yeah, this is a complete oddity for the Dreamcast. Super happy that I actually have it in my collection. It's not an official anything, but it's just cool to have a Zelda game that I can play on my Sega system. Eh. <clears throat> wow, so that's it for my Sega Dreamcast games that I have per picked up over the last like year and a half. A lot of weird stuff, like, like Legend of Zelda, what the hell? <laughs> that's something I never thought I'd ever see, which is why I bought it as fast, or I bought it when I did. So... Thank you very much, everybody, for joining me on this live stream. I promised you I'm not dying. <laughs> it's just I can't. For some reason, my throat just, like, goes dry randomly. Woo! Yeah. Um, I, will, I have... Okay, so let's update. So 253, 253 total games available in North America for the Dreamcast. In the last video, I had 190 games that I had collected. I did. I bought 37 new games, new official games, for this video, which brings me to having 26 games left to buy to complete my set. And out of all of them, they are commons and maybe one sort of pricey game. Um, I can't remember the name of the one that I'm missing. That might be kind of pricey. It's one of the. It's an official Sega game. I can't remember what it is though. <clears throat> well, whatever. Not important. Um, but I have a question. If anybody knows, do these new games being released count toward a complete set? And are they actually considered official? I don't know. I tend to think that they don't because they weren't released during the real run of the Dreamcast. After the fact stuff, I don't think should count. It's cool to have. It's cool that there's companies out there still making official games for the Dreamcast or making games for the Dreamcast. Some of them are high quality. Some of them, as you can see, are not. And even the fact that people are making repros for the Dreamcast is exciting to me because I love the Dreamcast. I love it. And yeah. So if you know anybody that can answer that question for me, let me know in the comments or whatever. Uh, anything over $50 is pricey to me, Colin. <clears throat> yeah. Well, excuse me, princess. She play ring of red. What is ring of red? I don't think I've heard of that one. Hmm. Whatever. Uh, 
consider pricey. I don't agree that they don't get. Yeah, I agree that they, I don't think they should. I, I think that the games that were released when the console was still relevant, when it was in production by Sega before they pulled the plug because Microsoft screwed them over, those should be the official games. These other ones are just extras, you know, extra games that you can play whenever, not considered, you know, part of the official set. So that's my way of thinking. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Ooh, ooh, excuse me. <clears throat> um, so once again, thank you for watching. Uh, I really enjoy doing these live stream videos. They are super fun to do. Way better than doing like a pre-recorded one that's been edited uh, for pickup videos. I w prefer this way more. Get to interact with people. Get to see people talking about it. Mr. Wizard is the new guy that I've been looking at for the uh, the repros and hacks. Clay. Yeah, he uh, he recently he's okay. So Mr. Wizard did propeller arena he did a reproduction of propeller arena and he did like a giveaway for it i missed out on it i totally flaked and forgot that he was doing it i was kind of ticked i know i can still find that one online somewhere but the new one that he's working on is like a three disc compilation of like a bunch of lucas arts adventure games like full throttle and maniac mansion day of the tentacle um the monkey island games he's going to be putting like a three disc compilation available or a three disc compilation of lucas arts games available for the dreamcast which i definitely need to have in my life Miranda. <laughs> now I'm going to go and kick everyone's ass in my building. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, there will probably be one more Dreamcasting video. Hopefully it won't take another year and a half for me to get to one. Hopefully I can finish this off this year. I would love to finish this off this year. So uh, thanks for watching again. Thanks for supporting me for the last five years, everybody. And uh, thank you, Chris, for being my, my one sole Patreon. I'm super thankful that anyone wants to be my Patreon at all. So thanks again for watching. I will see you guys next time. Uh, I have a new Top 3 Tuesday video coming out on Tuesday. And I hope you guys stay tuned for those. I really enjoy making those as well. So thanks again, and I'll talk to you all later.